Well, here's my first step. This is the one I dug out of the shed to uh, analyze it, look it over. Low unit's missing. Turned out the cover's the wrong cover. This is the old style. Um, uses a different latch in the back, pretty much. So I dug out a couple covers. This is the right cover. This is where the actually turning part of the latch is in the hood. I dig after 1968 newer. They put it underneath here, the lever underneath here. So this is the correct hood for it. So I had two of them to pick from here. Got another one over there. So I picked the best of the two, and the hood problem solved. Low units. I got two low units. One's a six horse with the smaller drive shaft. The other one's a nine and a half with the fat stubby drive shaft. What I'm probably going to do is take the adapter plate out of the one on the left and put it in the one on the right because it's already paint coordinated to the motor and put a, a different water pump housing on it and hopefully the, the copper tube is inside the midsection on this motor but there's a little unit problem solved, prop and all now I tried to free it up with my breaker bar initially because it seized but it, the flywheel rocks a little bit which is a good sign telling you that the uh, Crankshaft is not stuck, so it's just the piston hanging up. Could be one piston or two, but it does rock back and forth ever so slightly. Almost a quarter of an inch, uh, about eighth of an inch. So I tried to free it up just for shits and giggles with, with a bar, and that didn't work. So now I'm going to pull the head off, and that usually involves a torch and breaking bolts. So that's where I'm at now. I'm going to pop the head off and see what it looks like inside there to see how bad this thing is. Hopefully it's just from sitting in my shed for 20 years. And one spark plug hole, one spark plug was out. Number one was out, so dampness can get in there, even in the shed. So, But at least it was in the shed with a cover on it. So I'll get back to you when I get the head off. So what I did first, before I pull the head, I just like to do it this way. Get the fuel on out of the way because I'll be using a torch in this area. Long periods of time. Like I said, again, back to my 10 minutes on each bolt if I have to. I hate breaking bolts. Oh, yeah, and the thermostat cover was missing. Uh, has a few features that the later models didn't have. It's got the magneto ratchet spring attachment in here. Another uh, idle adjust here. No idle adjust on the tiller. That came out in 68, I think. So you actually adjust your idle here with your mixture. Uh, not your mixture, with your mechanical idle. It's done right here. And to get the old style fuel pump. That'd be amazing if it still works. We'll see. But again, back to pulling the head off. Could take 10 minutes, could take an hour, could take an hour and a half. We'll see. Good sign with the fuel pump. If you blow on the intake, and you get some sort of note, the diaphragm might be good. Draw in on the carburetor side, get the same sound, but you can't blow the other way. So the diaphragm could be good. If not, you can put diaphragms in these. They're still available. Or you can make one. You can actually take, a, I think, a V4 or V6 later model fuel pump, one of those big ones, and cut the diaphragm down to fit. I've done that before, too. So there's a lot of options to get these old guys going again. All right, back to pulling the head. So I got the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven loose. Got one more on the bottom. And then the head should come off. They all came right off with no air wrenches, all by hand. I don't go crazy with an air wrench because you just break bolts. Got lucky with this one. Now, this is what I use. Very simple. Six-point socket on a ratchet handle. Three-eighths drive. And that's it. Now, I'll get the head off and I'll show you what I see inside when I get it off. I'm going to show you, so you see what I see for the first time when I pull the head off. And to get down in the bottom one here, i got to use this back to a quarter inch drive because of the pans in the way, so. And when they're really tight, I just put a, a bar on it to give me a little more leverage. So they're all coming right out. Yep, so does this one. My head's already popping off. This motor, I don't know. It's not that salted up, really. I'm curious to see 
what's really wrong with it. If it's a power head shot or maybe it's just you got to do a little tapping, a little breaker bar on the flywheel together. Let's see. So I'm unveiling this for the first time. I have no, you're seeing what I see, so we'll see how bad it is. You now these cylinders, the casting around the, the aluminum around the cylinders, cast iron separates too, like some of the other motors. So here we go. Oh boy. I've seen worse, which is full of, uh, pop the head gasket off there, you can see how bad the block is. Head gasket's not blown, that's a good thing to observe too. The rings aren't burned out or nothing. Uh, I don't see any delamination of the aluminum around the cylinders. On the nine and a half, it's very thin, the aluminum too. They're not as prone as the 18 and 25s from the late 60s and early 70s had that problem. But I'm going to get the air over here, my compressor, and I'm going to blow all this stuff out and get a better look. This might free up. It looks like somebody was pounding on this piston already, too. There's marks, some small marks in it. So I'll get back to you once I can blow it all out and then we can get a better look at it. Let's blow all this stuff out and see what we're dealing with. <laughs> I should have done this first. Good enough for this neck of the woods. So I tried to free it up, you know, off camera with the breaker bar and my tapping technique uh, on the pistons as you work the breaker bar. I couldn't get it to go. And I just decided, hey, it's only a little two banger. Take it apart and get to the bottom of it and just fix it. So that's what I'm doing. So the next videos you'll see, uh, I'm in the garage. Uh, getting ready to take it apart. But anyway, here's what we have up to this point. Look familiar? Took it apart last night. I tried to free it up with the breaker bar and the, the, on the flywheel nut and tapping the pistons gingerly. Couldn't free it up. Turned out, number one piston wasn't hung up at all. The one with all the dirt in it in the previous video. Relatively clean. Rings aren't stuck, but number two had water in. Uh, water came in, leaked in through the ports, and it locked up. You can see. Now I'm going to clean all that up. If it's not pitted, I'm going to use the piston over again. If it's pitted really bad, I'll use another piston. The rings are uh, ninety percent free. A couple it's stuck in a couple spots, but I think I can free them up and save the rings. Well, number two was hanging up. That's why I couldn't free it up. The block looks good. The cylinders. I even left the recoil on. So I don't have to take it off and put it back on and rewind it. <laughs> the tricks you learn through the years. Save yourself labor down the road. I took everything else off, of course. But I'm going to hone the cylinders, inspect it. It should be good. Even if it's pitted down by the ports, I don't really care too much. As long as the area from the ports to the top of the cylinder are, you know, relatively smooth and pit-free, I'll use the block. The crank wasn't stuck at all. All the bearings look like brand new. Bottom one has some surface rust on it. I'll clean it up. But both uh, needle bearings turned. All the center bearings I took out, they were not caged. So you have to set them up. Uh, 29 bearings, I believe, in each journal. Same bearings that go on the connecting rod and the center main. Free needles, no cage. Like I said, same on the rods. No rust on the bearings at all. So the only rust really was on the piston and the 
around the ports inside the number two cylinder. But again, it took me maybe two and a half hours to take it apart. Eight o'clock last night till, I don't know, 10, 20, 10, 30. The major problem I had was they could be a pain in the ass in salt water. Right here. 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Heating up in here with a torch. I used a uh, impact extension with a uh, Phillips bit on it. Breaker bar. It took a while. I finally got it out. Uh, they're pretty unique, so I want to save everything I can save. But that's where I'm at with this motor now, so I'm going to continue to start cleaning the pistons up tonight, hone the cylinders. Uh, I might put it on film. It's pretty basic. But what I'm assuming probably happened years ago, while well, they scrapped this engine, probably overheated, bad water pump. Uh, there was no thermostat in the head, but it could have been that too. Who knows? Um, the bolts came right out on the cover, so they might have, before they scrapped it, they might have looked at it and, you know, but once, they, once the water gets in there, if you don't do something right away, as you all know, it's, it's, this is what you get. Uh, luckily, it wasn't too bad. I've seen much worse than this come back to life. This is like, you know, a godsend, really. It's just a labor. You've got to spend a good, you know, six, seven hours worth of labor to, to, to make it run again. Then I've got to build a low unit, too. So, And that was missing, too. So that's a telltale sign that they probably had trouble with the water pump. It's just human nature. People don't change the pumps. They don't flush the motors around here. It's salt water. And it kills them after so many years. Um, so, But that's what I figured happened with this motor originally. The water pump probably went bad. Water got in this uh, number one, two cylinder. And it uh, locked up. They put it away and it locked up and they tried to fix it. But we'll bring it back. That's what we're going to do. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.